Reverend Mel White, a very familiar face, a very important friend to men like Jerry Falwell, Pat Robertson, and Jim Baker. For he was their voice, their alter egos, the good Christian family man who ghost wrote their autobiographies. And they did not know, or perhaps did not want to know, their friend and mentor's secret, a sin they railed against from their various pulpits. Thank God I can say at last who I really am. I am gay, I am proud, and God loves me without reservation. Today, Mel White is the point man for gays against the religious right. He came out of the closet publicly last June when he was installed as dean of the Cathedral of Hope in Dallas, the largest primarily gay and lesbian church in the nation. His mission is to rally resistance against the very preachers he once served so loyally. And he says he's driven by the same passions that drive them. I am driven by ego, and I am driven by faith. I mean, why I'm talking to you is a mystery to me. Is it because I want to be on television as the queer of the year, or the day, or something? Or is it because I really have a truth to tell? I, I think all of that Both, is true. Huh? Both, yeah. Mel White's truth is to spread the word about this document, Jerry Falwell's formal declaration of war on homosexuality. I think that unless we take our stand in the pulpits today on this issue, a generation from now, we'll have a modern Sodom and Gomorrah, and we'll have a situation where no children don't know right from wrong. And a whole host of television evangelists have joined the crusade, like James Kennedy of the Coral Ridge Hour. My friends, I believe AIDS is unquestionably from the hand of God. Also in the vanguard is Mel White's former client, Pat Robertson. The same thing will happen here that happened in Nazi Germany. Because many of those people involved in Adolf Hitler were Satanists. Many of them were homosexuals. The two things seemed to go together. There were and religious groups are circulating so-called educational documentaries like this one. To parents and congressmen, warning of the threat of a gay agenda. Classroom programs promoting homosexuality are quietly being introduced in all regions of the United States. What kind of sexual experimentation among adolescents is being encouraged? When you hear that rhetoric trickling down, by the time it gets down to people with clubs, it says, better we abolish these people, better we kill them, we put them away, than it is that they live with us. Do you hold people like Jerry Falwell responsible for incidents of gay bashing? Absolutely directly. In fact, you're more likely to bash a gay in direct proportion to the amount of church you attend. White insists there are studies to prove his allegations, and yet he worked long and hard writing flattering books for his enemies, for those he now regards as bent on destroying him. I, I'm embarrassed by that. I don't know, I don't know how I can say that enough. Um, I repent. Mia culpa. <laughs> I was wrong. I was blinded by my love for Jesus and my love for the scripture and my hopes for the church. I, I didn't see what they were doing. And making a living. And I was, yeah, I had two kids in college. Did you write anti-homosexual? Never have I written a word against gay people. For them? For them. You were brought up, raised as a fundamentalist Christian. <clears throat> what were you taught about homosexuals? I was taught that a man who lies down with another man is an abomination. And I was taught that homosexuality is evil and that people who participate in the homosexual lifestyle are going to hell. That they've lost their soul, that God has abandoned them. So imagine the struggle for a young man from a devoutly Christian family, a youth for Christ cheerleader, whose first sexual stirrings are homosexual. I was crazy. I was winning all these prizes. I was being elected to every student body office. I was leading the band and running track and, and trying like mad to prove to God that I was okay, even though I wanted to hold hands with a football player instead of the cheerleaders. He thought marriage would cure his condition, and he and Lila Lure were married 31 years ago. Together they raised two children, Michael and Aaron. They'd known each other as kids and began dating in high school in the 50s. Lila says she had no suspicion about his homosexuality. I had dated a lot of young men, and Mel was just like the rest of them. And he was bright and witty and funny and, and fun to be with. And it seemed like life was an adventure with him, and 
That's why I wanted to be married to him. I didn't know I was gay. I thought it was something we would overcome. And I didn't, I, I didn't tell her until we were married because I thought I was a heterosexual who had this problem. How did she react to, to she, it? Just as loving as she did about anything. Do you want to stay in the marriage, she said. And he said, I, I want to be married. I want to have children and I want to get over this. <laughs> Through the years, the Whites spent thousands of dollars on Christian therapists. Mel endured exorcisms, electric shock therapy, and aversion therapy. I would feel like, yes, this therapy has helped. Now it's for sure. And then within months, I felt lonely and anxious and cut off from my own kind, and it would start again.